Hey everyone, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com. Hope your week is going smashingly. I've got another mix bus processing video for you. I know I'm on the trend here. If you caught the heavy mix bus theory video last week, uh, you'll kind of know where I'm going with this. One thing I learned from Greg Wells at the NAMM show a few weeks back was an interesting approach to multiband compression. So multiband compression is something that had confused me and mystified me for so long, and every time I would throw it on my mix or mastering with it or something, it would only ruin my mix, which is usually a good indicator that I should not use it until I know how to use it. Um, so that's point of advice number one. Don't use it if you don't know how to use it. But what I want to show you today is how I saw him using it. He was giving a demo at the Waves booth, how he was using it in a mix to create instant energy uh, in the mix. Take a listen to what happens when I uh, bypass my multiband compression. I'm going to show you all my settings and show you what I'm doing, but just hear it. No multiband compression on my mix bus, and then hear what happens the moment I turn it on, and then I'll explain what's going on. Right? It's, it's a cool but subtle thing that when you turn off, the energy sort of dips. It's not really a volume thing, but the energy kind of dips. When you turn it on, it just makes things in the mix just want to jump out at you. And there's no real good way to describe it. Greg was trying to describe it as what he says makes his mix sound like a real record. Um, that was the way he described it and put it into words. And to me, it sounds like the difference between a, a mix that sounds balanced and clear and good to a mix that sounds balanced, clear, and good, but wants to jump out at you and grab you from the speaker. So he was showing his settings, and all I literally did on this mix, because I mixed it, finished it, like right when I got back from Nam, was try to copy exactly what he was doing to experiment with it, because it was not the way I usually approach multiband compression. Usually, I use multiband to control the low end of a mix or bring up the low end of a mix. Here's what he was doing and here's how you can do it too. A multiband compressor is simply a compressor that can be tied to an EQ range. So it's like four compressors in one. You can compress the low end of a mix and not have the rest of the mix be compressed. You can compress the, compress the low mids, the high mids, and the highs. Any variable in between you can usually drag and change these ranges. Today I'm using ozone. Um, because it has a multiband compressor in it that's super good. Uh, and there's a lot of other plugins inside of Ozone, but I'm only using the multiband compressor. And what Greg was doing was not messing with the low end, not messing with the top end. He was messing with the, the, the bulk of the sonic frequency spectrum, the two mid ranges, right? And so what he had was a little bit of compression on the low mids, all the way through the mids, and a little bit of compression on the upper mids. And... Um, that was it. So take a look at this band, for example. Okay, Everything from 142 to 2K. And this is just a ballpark. If you zoom in here and take a look, my compressor ratio is 2 to 1, basically, with a 10 millisecond attack, which is a pretty slow attack. I did not tweak the release. This is a much slower release than I would typically do on, let's say, mix bus compression. But for whatever reason, I just left it there. And then I'm setting the threshold in such a way that this band is doing about 2 to 3 dB max of gain reduction. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. Take a look. So in a half dB to 2.7 dB at times, gain reduction. That's just where I set the threshold looking at the gain reduction. And then I got the makeup gain, I turned that band back up by one and a half dB. Now, why did I do this? Well, because it's only turning down the peaks in that range. And it's only turning down some of the peaks by two and a half dB, not all the time two and a half dB. So I didn't want to take the makeup gain all the way back up to two and a half. I just made up gain to the point that I felt like it was back to the volume that it was originally. So I'm not losing volume, I'm not gaining volume, but it's doing what compression does. It brings up the low level stuff to be more consistent and even with the louder peaks, which creates a sense of energy. That's why we use compressors a lot of times in the first place. You're doing that on a certain band. And then I do the exact same thing here on the upper mids. 
Okay, now the purpose of this video is not to explain why this is working because to be honest guys, I still am mystified by multiband compression. I'm just showing you kind of his settings, what he was doing on his mix at the time and how I slapped them on literally my mix bus for this mix to experiment with them and really like the results. So in the end, my output volume really doesn't change from my input volume. And if it did, I could just pull the master output here so that I get the difference. So here's before. Very, very cool. To me, a very desirable difference. Like the bottom end stays the same. The air on his vocal stays the same. I noticed like the, the band. I noticed the piano, the guitars, the snare drum all starting to jump out at me. And that's the excitement and the energy I'm looking for. So I'm using multiband compression to contain some of the peaks and then the majority of the band instruments in these ranges, turning them down and then making up the gain so that really the low level stuff, maybe it's the piano hits that aren't as loud, maybe it's the snare drum hit that isn't quite as loud, maybe it's the guitar chord that's not quite as full. It brings that overall musical energy up to be out in your face, so that everything in the mix jumps out in your face. So try this if you have a multiband compressor. Some DAWs ship with them. Studio One has a great multiband compressor. If you have one from Waves, they've got a great one. If you have Ozone, you have one included inside of Ozone. Try one out, try to do a little bit of one to two and a half dB of gain reduction on the middle two bands, make up the gain so you're not really increasing any volume, but you're just getting it back to where it was, and see if it does not give you more energy and punch and pop on your mix. That's all I have for you today. Let me know, make a comment, and let me know if you have tried this and if it's worked for you. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about this, uh, this theory. Uh, and thanks to Greg Wells for sharing it. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to the videos, do that. It helps me out and it helps you out so you know the moment a new video hits your inbox and the moment we've got some new content. And if you like where this is going and you want more of this kind of training and more stuff in your inbox, you should definitely sign up for the mailing list. I'll continue to tell you that. That's where my best content lives. It's absolutely free and you'll only get more great free content to your inbox when you need it most. Have a great week. Looking forward to hearing about how you're using this technique on your next mix. We'll talk to you soon.